from New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now John Chapman, editor of the theatrical yearbook Best Plays and drama critic of the New York Daily News is here to introduce June Havoc and Donald Cook in Samson Rayfieldson's Skylark. Mr. Chapman. That season back in 1940 certainly was one for laughter. Of the ten best plays of that year, eight were comedies or comedy dramas. People were roaring at such antics as The Man Who Came to Dinner, Life with Father, and The Male Animal. They were getting warm chuckles out of William Soroyan's The Time of Your Life. And they were finding sophisticated humor in the comedy which we have decided to play for you this evening. Samson Rafelson's Skylark. Mr. Rafelson stole this play, but he was never sued for plagiarism because he stole it from himself. He had written a magazine short story called Skylark, and after he read it in print, he thought it would make a fine stage piece for Gertrude Lawrence and Donald Cook. And so it turned out to be. Our heroine this evening will be played by one of my favorite comedians, June Havoc. And our hero is the same and original Donald Cook. Mr. Cook, incidentally, has been quite busy on Broadway, for he's been giving one of his fine comic performances in The Moon is Blue since March 8, 1951. I've mentioned sophisticated humor in Skylark. Naturally, the proper place for stylish goings-on is a fine country house near New York. The time is a Saturday evening in late summer, and Mr. and Mrs. Tony Kenyon have the place all fixed up for a party. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Franklin. Hello, Theodore. Mr. Kenyon down here. He's dressing, sir. I'll tell him that you're here. Excuse me, sir. Kenyon residence... Oh, yes, sir. Yes, the guests are invited for eight o'clock. Oh, you're very good, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Kenyon will be expecting you. Theodore, two to one says that was Mr. Valentine. How did you guess, sir? There was that extra note of deference in your voice that only a fat sponsor with a fat advertising account could evoke. Well, sir, I naturally take an interest in Mr. Kenyon's advertising business. You know, he occasionally consults me. You don't say. Yes, sir. He shows me his ads on the deluxe products. Uh, he says I'm his favorite snob, sir. Ah, here comes Mr. Kenyon. Uh, hello, George. Uh, did you get it? Right here. Finest wristwatch Cartier's had. Yeah, let's see. Happy anniversary to Lydia from Tony with love. Sounds dull. Uh, what else can a husband say to a wife after ten years on the back of a watch? I said the same thing to Charlotte last year. Oh, where is she? I have to drive back and pick her up. Oh, I appreciate you doing this, George. That baby mall campaign has had me going day and night. You have really done it with that campaign, Tony. The whole agency's buzzing. Pictures of American society women when they were babies. That one of Mrs. Vanderbilt trying to swallow her foot. Brother. Yeah, I'm going after Valentine for two million on that account. Do you think you'll swing it? He's coming to the party tonight. Do you <clears throat> play politics with Valentine's wife, Myrtle? I haven't had to yet. Quite a gal. Used to be in the chorus, you know. Yeah, she scares me a little. I'd rather concentrate on selling her husband. Yeah, well, I'm going back for Charlotte. I'll see you later. Well, I'll walk out to the car with you. I need some air. You know, I ought to get those layouts in shape for tomorrow's staff meeting, George. I've been thinking. And... Tony! Tony! Uh, he stepped out for a moment, madam. Oh, well, good. Then I'll have time to arrange this. Uh, put it somewhere conspicuous, Theodore. Uh, uh, yes, madam. It's my anniversary gift to Mr. Kenyon. Do you think you'll like it? An album, madam? Oh, more than just an album, Theodore. It's a sort of a picture history of our marriage. Ten years. Uh, yes, madam. I'll just put it... Um, 
Here on the evening paper. That's good. Oh, hurry up. Here we come. Uh, Theodore, did you hide my cigarettes? Mr. Benson of Red Wing Cigarettes is going to be here tonight. Uh, yes, madam. And sunshine soap and all the bathrooms? Yes, madam. Very good. Now, make sure it's the new cake and the lavender wrapper. Hello, darling. Kiss. Say, did I tell you about the new baby malt account? Huh? I said, do I get a kiss? Oh, well, of course. It's up to two million. Yes, darling, you told me. Twice. Mm, I wonder where the evening papers can be. Uh, it's going to be tough. Valentine's wife wears the skirts, I understand. Uh, say, uh, how do you get along with her? All right. She said she'd like my cook. Darling, how would you like to have an album with the history of our marriage in it? That's good to know about the cook. I've always thought it would be nice to have an album with pictures and things like, like the blue ribbon I wore the day you were fired. Tony, are you listening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just let me read this baby malt ad again. And the time... The time the hippopotamus walked in and sat in my lap. You remember that, don't you, Tony, dear? Yeah, of course. Ah, oh, this is terrific copy. It's good for you, it's good to you. Oh, what's the use? Here, darling. Hmm? Yeah, my anniversary it. gift to you. Open it. <laughs> oh, well, aren't you cute? Huh? You like it? Well, I'll be done. Look at that picture. Who's he? He's just the judge that married us. <laughs> uh, what's this? That's a Fifth Avenue bus. We picked each other up on a Fifth Avenue bus. Do you remember? Say, that's right. <laughs> you were wearing a kind of a, a flowery dress, right? Why, Tony, you do remember. Well, of course. And this Christmas card. Well, I remember. That was the Christmas you were going to have a baby. And... Oh, I see. I'm sorry. That's all right, darling. I've got you. That's what counts. I know, but... Well, it's tough on a woman to know she can't have any children. That was still one of the loveliest Christmases I've ever had. Well, with me out of a job, not a buck in the bank, hanging around you like a kid, <laughs> practically weeping. I loved it. Hey, what's this, reservations on a boat? That, that was the trip to South America we were going to take. We've been going to take it for six years now. Say, that's right. You know, I haven't had a vacation in all that time. Gosh, we really ought to go this year. Oh, gee, I'd love that, Tony. Oh, I could take six weeks off. I'm a third vice president. Honey, we'll do it. Tony, do you mean that? Well, why not? With a little luck, I'll have that baby malt campaign in the bag tonight. And then uh, sunshine soap, a Red Wing cigarettes, Dillingham's whiskey. We can start in a month. Huh? Rio de Janeiro. Mexico City. Buenos Aires. Oh, Tony, kiss me quick. Buenos Aires. Hey, you know what? What? I could open a branch office while we're in Buenos Aires. Oh, Tony. Oh, well, of course, uh... Yes? Well, three months out of the business, I don't know. George has had his eye on my job now, and just one account lost. Well, and... thanks, darling. I had a lovely trip. Well, anyway, it was a nice impulse. If I sew up the Valentine account tonight, we can talk about it again. Uh, uh-huh. If we could just make some gesture. Say, you mentioned she likes our cook. Oh, no. Well, what did she say? Well, she simply said she'd like to have a cook like Maddie. What did you say? Well, I made it quite clear to her that this is a free country and that the slaves were liberated by Abraham Lincoln in 1864. That wasn't very bright, darling. Well, I have no intention of giving Maddie to her, if that's what you mean. Lydia, Baby Malt is our number one account. It's my account. I may get an additional million in advertising tonight. That, that means 150,000 commissions to the agency. It means I am sitting pretty. The answer is still no. All I am asking you to do is to appease our biggest client. Appease? That's a very good word. I've done nothing but appease your clients since the day you became successful. Well, you'll just have to keep your clients out of my kitchen. The living room is as far as they can go. Lydia, if you don't give that cook to Myrtle Valentine and do it with good what grace... What do you expect me to do? Put Natty on a platter and deliver her to the Valentines with an apple in her mouth? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mr. and Mrs. Franklin, madam. Oh. Oh, good Lord, I forgot the watch. Oh, uh, here, darling. Huh? Happy anniversary. A watch? Oh, Tony. Oh, oh it's beautiful. <laughs> Happy anniversary to Lydia... From Tony, with love. You really like it? I love it. You love me? Oh, very much. Then, uh, what about Matt, he? Tony, so help me. One of these days well, I'm going to... Well, well, a happy married couple. Hello, Tony. Lydia. Hello. Hello, hello, Charles. Hello. 
What's uh, going on here? Do I sense a little discord? No, 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 nothing at all. Uh, come in the library, George. I want to show you some new drawings. Must we? Well, only take a minute. I want you to see them before Valentine gets here. Okay. Excuse me, ladies. Well, what happened between you two? But for two cents, I'd walk right out. And where would you go? I don't know. Probably around the block. Isn't it too late for that? Why? Why is it always too late? Is a woman doomed just because she's over 30? What would you do? Do? I'd, I'd get a job. Oh, it sounds like fun. I'll bet it wouldn't be. What do you suppose we'll be like in ten years, Charlotte? I can't imagine. I can. We'll be ten pounds heavier. Is that all marriage is? Anniversaries and starches and fats? Excuse me, madam. The guests are arriving. Very well, Theodore. Once more into... Are you the bartender, pal? Uh, yes, sir. Scott, rye or brandy? Uh, a little of each. I beg pardon? I have a big weekend in front of me. I'm with the emperor. With whom, sir? The Emperor and the Empress, they live in the big house up on the hill. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Valentine. You sir. have uttered their name. Yes, forgive me, sir. Here uh, is your drink. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, who's the pretty woman coming toward us? Uh, that says the hostess, Mrs. Kenyon. Thanks. Hello. Hello there. You the hostess? Well, yes. I'm the guest. Uh, madam, the gentleman is sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Valentine. Yeah, that's right. Sit down. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. You're supposed to entertain. All right. To you. My condolences. <laughs> Nothing so sad as your wedding anniversary. Ah, I know you. You're a ten-cent store cynic. You always say the opposite to what's printed on the greeting cards. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd like it to be wonderful. I'd like to see you sitting on a star. I'm rooting for you, see? <laughs> you know, I think I'm glad to meet you. I doubt it. Why? Any woman that's been married ten years doesn't want to meet me. It's like meeting life. You want to play at it, that's all. You want to shoot the shoots with a happy, frightened little squeak, and then you want to nibble some popcorn, climb in your car, and go home and shiver gratefully at what you almost did. Hmm. I can't figure out whether you're selling the sanctity of the home or fun on the side. Whichever rings a bell. <laughs> What's your name? His name is Bill Blake, darling, and I've been looking all over for him. Bill, darling, have you forgotten you're my house guest? No, but I was well on the way. Oh, well, there you are. Uh, Mrs. Valentine, you know my wife, I believe? We've met. And Mr. Valentine? My warmest felicitations, Mrs. Kenyon. You're a lucky man, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> Won't you... Won't everybody sit down? <laughs> oh, nice work, everybody. Nice work. Now, Bill, I suspect you've had a drink already, haven't you? I'm sitting on top of an iceberg. The wind is roaring over the waves, and I have no coat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're quite a character, Bill. Isn't he a character, Mrs. Kenyon? Uh, yes. Indeed, yes. What are you when you're not being a character, Mr. Blake? <laughs> Just one of the best courtroom lawyers in New York, that's all. When he's not sitting on an iceberg, that is. <laughs> oh, well, of course. You're, you're the William Blake. You were in the papers. Bill is always in the papers. The judge wiped away a furtive tear and the sentence was suspended. Bill has great possibilities, but he needs guidance. Oh, look, Myrtle, don't talk so loud. I can overhear every word. Uh, may I uh, propose a toast to the Kenyans? Oh, yes, do. Uh, Harley's a wonderful toastmaster, if I do say so myself. Go ahead, Poochie. Uh, well, now, uh, let me think. Uh... Ah, yes, to the Kenyans. Here before us stands a couple who are young, healthy, successful, with a charming home and the best cook this side of the Rockies. Did you know we've been coveting your cook, darling? Really? Hey, darling, I... Uh, may I make a suggestion? Oh, you're right, dear. The Valentines must come to dinner more often. Where was I? Uh, you just got kicked out of the kitchen. Oh, no, <laughs> just a minute. You're all teasing the Valentines too much. Uh, dear, uh, shall we tell them? You tell them, dear. Only this morning, Lydia said to me, Tony, the Valentines enjoy Mattie's cooking so much, let's give her to them. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> I really don't know what to say. It's such a generous offer, darling. 
I couldn't possibly. Oh, well, then... And yet, we... on one condition, you two must have dinner with us one of these days. Yes, yes, you really must. And now I'll finish my toast. Uh, to the Kenyans, a magnificent, happily married couple. <laughs> Amen. Very nice. <laughs> Another drink for Mr. Valentine? Hmm? Oh, uh, what time is it, Franklin? Oh, it's only 4 a.m., Mr. Valentine. The evening's young. Well, just one more, gentlemen. Uh, where were we? Well, I just told you about my idea for having the society women posing as babies. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, society women. Uh, you're quite right. They give a baby food, uh... Dignity. Of course, we're going as far as we can, showing them toothless and bald, and waving a rattle for baby moral. Yeah, of course. Brilliant job, Kenyon. Brilliant. <laughs> well, George helped me with the layout, you know. <laughs> we're all delighted with Mrs. Valentine, the way she likes the campaign. Mm, I've always said, gentlemen, that when it comes to a woman's instinct, there's nothing like uh, a woman's instinct. Well, certainly no one has it the way Mrs. Valentine does, eh, George? Hmm? Oh, she has it. Yes, she has both feet on the ground. She takes a great interest in everything I do. <laughs> and when she disapproves, well, <laughs> she doesn't exactly scold me, you know. But, uh, well, I wouldn't know what to do without her. My father left me 11 corporations, and frankly, I didn't know which way to turn. And then you met her. What a break. I would almost call it a miracle, gentlemen. You know how we met? Through a mistake. My townhouse is number 51, and she was looking for someone at number 61, and she got them mixed. And that's how we met. Less than a week after I read the will. She has a fine business mind, all right. Well, still talking shop? Oh. As a matter of fact, we were just talking about you, Miss Valentine. Oh, really? Well, the boys were commenting on your feminine intuition, pussycat. You think highly of it? I think it's a real gift. Well, I've just been using it. You see, I don't seem able to find Mr. Blake. No? Yes. It seems that he and your wife wandered away more than an hour ago. Now, my intuition, Mr. Kenyon, tells me that uh, Mr. The boys Blake, you... uh, meant that your intuition was helpful when applied to the new baby malt campaign, dear. Oh, that. Hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not so sure about the campaign. Aren't you, Pussycat? No, dear. Of course, I might change my mind tomorrow if... In the cold light of day, Mr. Kenyon is able to explain a few things about what's going on. Well, Miss Valentine, I'm Good sure... night, Mr. Kenyon. Will you give our apologies to your wife? I think she and Mr. Blake will understand that we couldn't wait much longer. Come, Porchy. Uh, yes. Well, good night, Mr. Kenyon, Mr. Franklin. Good night. Good night. Well, if I'm not mistaken, there goes that extra million out the door. Well, what's she sore about? Why shouldn't Lilia go for a stroll? Tony, old man... Do you think this Bill Blake is merely a house guest at the Valentines? You mean he... He isn't her godfather, you know. Well, I'll do... Say, who does that guy think my wife is? And why does she let him think so? Hey, where do you suppose they are right now? On the night of our anniversary, the night that's supposed to be the happier... When a woman is supposed to... Now, who is this heel Blake? Yeah, now, look, look, Tony. Well, it's her fault more than his, too. Any woman in her right mind, my, a louse like that comes within ten feet of her, she ought to know enough not to go walking in the moonlight with take, him. Take it easy, Tony. Take it easy. I'm going to tear the roof off when she gets home. <laughs> She'll remember this anniversary, all right. Ten years of marriage and do a thing like that. Don't you think I have any feelings? Yeah, Tony, keep your shirt on. A million-dollar account, $150,000 in commission to us after the way I work. You want some advice? Be a nice guy when she comes in. A nice I guy? I know how to handle these things. My wife, Charlotte... Well, Charlotte isn't walking in the moonlight without heel. You can never predict how a woman will react. I know a woman who will retaliate by giving you something to be mad about. Oh. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Well, there's no use having a scene. What the heck? I know Lydia's okay. She probably just 
Took a little ride with him and didn't realize how the time was passing. Uh, sure, oh, that's what's happened. <laughs> Probably. Hey. Oh. Wake up. What? Oh, where are we? In my car, on top of the hill. Huh? Dawn is about to break. The dawn is... Good heavens, what happened? Absolutely nothing. Oh. You fell asleep, so did I. But, but, but it's almost daylight. Mm-hmm. But, but, but... You tired? No. Sorry? No, not a bit. All my life I've wanted to do something like this. To just walk out on a party. I love you. You mustn't say that. What are you going to do about it? Now, just a moment, Mr. Blake. The ride in the night air was lovely. The view from the hill is enchanting. One ride, one hill, one view. Add up to anything? Mm Mm-hmm. The dregs of my 10th anniversary. Want to go on? Uh Uh-huh. What for? To fight. No, not you. You can't lick our time. Not when you're married to it. You'll drink a little and flirt a little just the way you did tonight, but that's all. You drink a little and flirt a little until maybe on your 20th anniversary... Bill, don't, please. On your 20th anniversary, you'll become like me. Without the bottle, I'm nothing. And with the bottle, Myrtle Valentine. Myrtle. I'm trying to put my cards on the table. Oh. Oh, what do you see in her? Myrtle? I don't know. She's fireworks, which is better than total darkness, I suppose. Then there's my my law firm. We get half of our business from Mr. Myrtle. And that's the story of your life. Mm, careful, it could be the story of yours someday. Hmm. What do you want, Bill? Look. We walked out on a party a couple of hours ago. It wasn't so hard. Why can't we just keep walking? I got a boat on the sound, 60 feet at the waterline with a diesel auxiliary. A woman could be comfortable on that boat. What kind of woman? Well, she'd have beauty. Otherwise, I wouldn't want her. And she'd have bitterness and pain. Otherwise, she wouldn't want me. And she'd have courage, like yours. Hmm. What would she find on your boat, Bill? The sea. I get seasick. The sky. I got the sky when I married Tony. I think I'm getting sky sick, too. (sighs) Okay. No sail. Bill... Have you ever had a passenger? No. Oh. (laughs) I'm beginning to feel sorry for you. I'm sorry for myself. (laughs) I was in the war. It had no beauty, and I tried basking in the electric lights. They hurt my eyes, so I quit. I'm yellow, see? Well, I'm not. You haven't even tried. What do you think I'm doing now? Why do you suppose I came out with you? What? Let's not talk about it anymore, hmm? I know what I want. I've always known. Lydia. Let me be now. Now, just let's go home. Bill, I want to go home. Okay. You can get car sick, too, I guess. Yes. Well, I've been waiting for hours. Where the devil have you been? Well? Darling, forgive me. I behaved terribly. I was furious about the cook, and I went off with this man whom I hardly know. Who means nothing to me. Nothing, Tony, honestly. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm not worrying about that. I wanted our anniversary to be something romantic and, and beautiful. I could have forgotten all those last years if only it made tonight belong to us. And instead, you made it ugly. You made it all conniving and advertising and, and bootlicking. So I tried to make it ugly, too. 
Oh, what terrible things people do to each other. We punish each other and hurt each other when so little could heal everything. Don't you see how much I love you, Tony? It isn't too late, is it, darling? No, it isn't too late. I hope. We'll see. Operator Crescent 553. What are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm ordering you to get on the phone and apologize to Myrtle Valentine. Tony. Don't you know who this Bill Blake is? He's her boyfriend, that's who. And you almost lost me one million dollars in accounts tonight with your antics. Accounts? Is that... Is that all this means to you? It meant that... Mr. Valentine, please. Oh, hello. Uh, this is Tony Kenyon. And my wife wants to talk to you. Now, take it and talk fast. All right, Tony. Hello? I hope you haven't gone to bed yet. Yes? Yes, he left about five minutes ago. I'm very sorry we got back so late. You see, I went out for some air, and he was wandering around, and so... Uh, really, Mrs. Valentine, I'm quite past that sort of thing. Yes, he should be there now. Good night. All right, Tony. Good well, thank heaven you didn't ruin our anniversary by losing that account. No, I wouldn't have wanted to do that. Well, I'm exhausted. Let's go to bed. In a moment. You go ahead. Mm, okay. Don't be long. No. No, I won't. <laughs> oh, it, it is something wrong, madam? Wrong, no. Nothing's wrong, Theodore. I'd like you to do something for me. Uh, yes, madam. I'd like you to bring my large suitcase down to the guest room. Don't let Mr. Kenyon see you, please. And then call me a cab. I want to take the 8 o'clock train. Yes, madam. Uh, anything else? No. I guess that's all, Theodore. Yes, madam. Oh, madam. Uh, yes. Many happy returns of the day. In a moment, Act Two of Samson Raphaelson's Skylark, starring June Havoc and Donald Cook. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. Here's a shopping hint that can save you disappointment. Today or tomorrow, when you shop at your nearest Thrifty Mart, Fitzsimmons, or Roberts Markets, let the familiar, famous brand names that are advertised daily over KFI be your shopping guide. Shop and save during this remarkable KFI value week. Answer. What is? Why? Now, don't, don't look at me like that, Tony. Whenever I get into a jam with Charlotte, I lie. It's the safest, most reliable thing a red-blooded man can do. Oh, uh, just what do you mean, George? Whatever she wants me to say to her, I say. Oh, that means making promises. I've made hundreds of them. What about a showdown? I have been married to Charlotte for 15 years, and she's still with me. Not good. It's easy. It's easy. When things get tight, you just renew the promises. Oh, no, I don't know, George. Well, that sort of thing isn't in my line. I, I'm afraid you and I are constructed differently. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Theodore? Uh, Mr. Blake is here. Here? In the living room, sir. Oh, uh, George, excuse me a minute, will you? Uh, sure, go right ahead. What do you want? Oh, uh, hello. Uh, first of all, I'd uh, like a drink, hmm? Help yourself. Thanks. Uh, where's, uh, where's the missus? Don't you know? No, pal, I don't. She's gone. Gone where? And that's what I want to know. Where did you go with her last night? Uh, don't ask me, pal. I wasn't photographing the scenery. Now, listen. If you really want to know, she's having a look at the horizon. What horizon? Pal, there's only one. She examined it with great care. She thought maybe she could get it at a bargain price. I almost had a soul when she decided to go home and try on an apron. Well, the wind was blowing pretty hard and my banjo was out of tune. So we came home. You follow me? I don't know what you're mumbling about. You're drunk. Okay, I'll give it to you straight. The lady was unhappy. She doesn't like cigarettes, soap, whiskey, or your clients. She wants me to quit my job? Pal, I would say it's a necessity. A sine qua non. 
If I was married to a woman like Liddy, I'd spit in my boss's eye, take her by the hand, and climb to the top of the nearest hill. She's a woman. She's life. And she makes the grass grow. She's a skylark. She... You seem to make a specialty of other men's wives. Now, look, don't get tough. I, I don't want to fight with you. Then get the devil out. Just as you say, pal. You mind if I finish my drink? And... Lydia. Hello, Tony. Hello, Bill. Oh, uh, I was just leaving. Bill, would you wait for me down at the station, please? I'd like to consult you on a legal matter. The station? Oh, okay. Any place you say. Where have you been? I stayed with Joe and Jean Martin. Martin? Well, we haven't seen them for ages. Yes, it's a pity, too. They're very nice. They have an eight-year-old boy now. His name is Philip. And they're still in love after all these years. It was wonderful being with people like that. Well, where are you going? Upstairs to pack some things. Pack? Didn't I mention it in my note? I want a divorce, Tony. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm afraid about. I do. No, no, you're tired. Now rest up a few days and think it over. I've been thinking it over for, for a few years. Don't make it difficult, Tony, please. Difficult? Listen, baby, I'm going to make it no, impossible. Please, let go of my arm. You aren't Tony, going anywhere. Tony, let go. Or you're hurting me. What do you think you're doing to me? Lydia. Lydia, I, I love you. I love you too, Tony. But it's no use. You know it and I know it. Lydia, for Pete's sake. Excuse me. I... Oh, hello, Lydia. I thought I heard a woman's voice. I'm glad to see you back. <clears throat> well, I... I'll i be going, Tony. Guess you won't need me now. Remember, Tony, the old baloney. You'll never regret it. <laughs> well, goodbye, George. Uh, thanks for the advice. I don't mention it. Well, so long, everybody. I think I'll skip the packing. You can send my... Uh, Lydia, uh, sit down for a minute. No. No, but... at least hear what I have to say. After all, we have meant something to each other all these years. All right. Now, uh, what I'm going to say may sound a little, well, like the old baloney, but believe me, Lydia, it's true. When I saw you on that bus ten years ago, I knew just one thing, that I wanted to be near you. Well, I still want to be near you no matter what it costs. No, Tony. You couldn't afford the price. You can't serve your job and me at the same time. And I know where your heart is. Okay, then I quit my job. How's that? Well, it hurts me to see you like this. I know you couldn't possibly quit, even if you think you do mean it, but... Tony, I'm deeply touched. Well, how about uh, half time? Come home early, no work in the evening, no Sunday conferences, vacation every year. Oh, gee, that'd be wonderful. Tony, can you look me in the face... And say that that would be possible? No. No, I guess not. There's only one thing to do. I'll quit. You... You don't sound like yourself. What's happened to you? Well, it's a little difficult to explain. You see, I've been thinking a lot since I read your note. In my heart, I knew you were right, but I was fighting it. Tonight, though, when Bill came into the house and acted as if you were his property, and then you walked in and began to treat me like the party of the second part, well, I really knew what I wanted. Oh, Tony. Now, look, what you want is just the high living, the, the, the security, the two cars in the garage, right? Well, I agree with you absolutely. You're right 100%. Tony, I just can't believe my ears. I mean it, Lydia. We go right back to that moment on the bus. Here we are on the bus. We've never even heard of the advertising business. Or, or any other business. After all, you hadn't at that time. Oh, uh, I suppose not, but I've heard of it since. Oh, well, the thing is with that. We uh, just wanted each other, or... Am I remembering it too romantically? No, not at all. I was crazy about you. Sweetheart, you, you were so beautiful. Well, not beautiful the way pretty girls are pretty. You were just all mine. Too, too wonderful for me. Too glorious. One look at you and I had life insurance out in your name. Oh. I was fighting gangsters to rescue you. <laughs> and we had a backyard with a kid playing around. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. That's all right. It's all right. I loved you then almost as much as I love you now. Lydia. Lydia. Oh, Tony, hold me close. Let's telephone, darling. Yeah, let it ring. Well, it might be important. Okay. Hello? Oh, yes. It's Bill Blake. He's calling from the station. He wants to talk to you. Oh? Hello? 
Yes. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. No. No. Yes. Well, I'm not sure. Well, you... Hey, give me that phone. Hello, Blake. My wife is not getting a divorce. No, give, give it to me, Tony. Hello, Bill. Well, maybe I'm not. Oh, what do you mean, maybe? Well, I have to think about it. Well, let me talk to him. Hello, Blake. Now, look, I have a very clear picture of what my wife wants. Uh, we've discussed it, and she's going to get it. Huh? Well, from me, of course. Here, you tell him. Bill, it's true. He actually offered to quit his job. What? Huh? What did he say? He says, will you put it in writing? What? what? Hey, hang up on him, of all the... He, he says he means it, Bill. And I... Well... Yeah? Yeah. What's he saying? He says if you quit your job, you won't be Romeo. You'll just be Tony Kenyon, unemployed. Will you do me just one favor and hang up on that heel? Well, no, I, no, Tony, I will not. I'm glad he phoned. I, I was in danger of being swept off my feet. Hello, Bill? No. No, I want you to stay in the line. Where are you? A phone booth? Are you comfortable? What? Well, yes. Now what? As my representative, he feels that I'm entitled to a definite picture of the program. Yeah, well, tell him to... Uh, he, uh, let me talk to him. Hello, Blake. Now, uh, listen, we're going to take a year off. I'm going to let her lead me by the hand. Uh? Well, you've got a nerve. What's he want to know? He wants to know if we can afford it. I think that's an excellent question. Oh, now, look. Uh, what? What do you say? Oh. Huh? He's gone out to get some more nickels. <clears throat> now, let's see. Um, in the checking account last Wednesday, we had 4000 Now, there's five in the savings account. Is that all? Well, there's the house. In six years, the mortgage will be paid. Well, I think that's disgraceful. What, do you suppose it's my fault? Well, it's nobody's fault. It's just... Hello? He's back. Let me talk to him. Hello, Bill. I've decided to stay. Yes. What? 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 Now, you see here, Bill, nobody is going to talk to me like that, not even a lawyer. Goodbye. What did he say? He said you were a liar. The whole thing's a hoax. Oh, forget him. Hmm. You know, he's already forgotten. Oh, darling, how long will it take you to clean up the office? Well, let's see, I, I could be out in, oh, five weeks. That long? Oh, well, we can wait. We have a whole life to Yeah, it certainly looks like <laughs> it. You happy? Oh, yes. Sleepy? A little. I, uh, <clears throat> I bet you ten cents I can get upstairs faster than you can. Done. Ready? Ready. One, mm -hmm. and, uh, two, <laughs> and, uh, three! <laughs> Beg pardon, madam, but Mrs. Valentine is downstairs. Uh, are you awake, madam? Uh, what do you suppose she wants? Uh, I don't know. Well, it must be about the cook. Uh, have you talked to Matty? Well, I haven't exactly had time, darling. Are we awake yet? It's 10 a.m. Sure, of course. We're... I'll go down and see her. Tom, I'm coming down, Theodore. Uh, yes, madam. I'll be down as soon as I dress. Oh, never mind. I can handle her. Oh, uh, darling. Yes? Uh, might as well give her the cook. Uh, after all, Maddie will be looking for a job in six or seven weeks anyway. Well, that's true. Yeah, and uh, don't say anything about my quitting. It, it might seem like uh, gloating. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Heck with her, huh? See you in a minute. Well, good morning, Mrs. Valentine. Isn't it strange? Now, Tony and I were just talking about our cook. <laughs> that is, your cook. Were you? How nice. Mm, isn't it a lovely day? Yes. Mr. Blake is very charming, isn't he? He has a remarkable mind. Are you kidding? What do you mean? You don't fool me with that mental stuff, dearie. Well, I assure you, I have no intention of seeing Mr. Blake again, if that will ease your mind. Are you trying to imply there's something between Bill and me? Aren't you trying to imply it? Listen, dearie, when you called me last night, I was polite. I decided to hear what Bill had to say when he came home. Well, he never came home, and you know why. It's news to me. What was he doing in your home yesterday? Why did he phone you from the station? Uh-oh, I see you've had him watched. 
I'd hate to tell you what I think of that. I don't think you know who you're talking to. Well, you bet I do. You're putting on a lot of airs for a woman in your position. Who are you, anyway? A nobody from a squirt college in Boston whose husband doesn't make in a year what mine makes in a week. There's nothing you can do, honey, that I can't do better. I can be a better wife. Really? I gave my husband a baby at the end of one year, which is more than you'll do in a lifetime. You get out of here. Not till I'm ready. I'm giving the orders, Mrs. Kenyon. Hands off Bill Blake or your husband will be looking for a job. Are you personally threatening to discharge my husband? One more crack and he's through right now. Do you think for one minute that all the years Tony has put into his work can be tossed aside by a a greedy little tramp like you? He's out, do you hear me? He's fired. When Tony quits, it will be of his own free will, and on the day and hour he chooses... That's just fine, providing it's Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Mrs. Valentine, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I will... Tony was going to quit anyway. Oh, that's a hot one. It doesn't matter whether you believe that or not. It happens to be true. I should actually thank you. Goodbye. Don't slam the door. You dirty little witch. Why? Tony! Oh, Tony! Uh, Yes, dear. Oh, is she gone? Yes. Yes, she's gone. And, And darling, I have the most exciting news for you. Yeah, have you? Yes. You don't have to wait seven weeks or even six or even even one. You're fired. Uh? We're free, darling. Right now, this very minute. Oh, Tony, think of it. Ten minutes ago, you had an office, a desk, a telephone, a thousand things to do. And in one easy stroke, I I wiped it all out. Now, that's what I'd call genius. Wouldn't you? Yeah, that's right, darling. That's what I'd call it. Genius. Press it again. Maybe they're upstairs. George, do you suppose they really want to see us? Don't be ridiculous. It's over a week since I was promoted to Tony's job. The least I can do is drop in on him. Press the bell again. Before I do, now just how much am I supposed to know? Am I supposed to know that Tony has been lying to Lydia? Am I supposed to know how he happened to get fired? Tony knows you worm everything out of me. Hello. Hi. Well, George, hey, it's good to see you. Come on in. How are you, George? I'm fine, Tony. Hey, I hear you got my job. Well, oh, forget it. I... You have my sympathies. It's, um, it's good to see you so cheerful, Tony. Well, why not? You're the one who should be miserable. Me? Why? Well, George won't be able to call his soul his own now. He'll work like a dray horse. You'll never see him. He'll never see himself. Have you received any offers lately, Tony? Honey, I've stepped off the express train. I'm in the woods by a babbling brook, and I love it. Now, Tony, Lydia isn't... Listening, you don't have to kid us. No, I really mean it, George. Word of honor. You know where we went last night? Coney Island. Yeah, what a time. Night before we did the theater. Two shows. And you mean before... that you're really happy? First time in years. This morning I played golf. This afternoon I'm going to relax with a good book. Why, I haven't read a book for years, and neither of you. And tomorrow... Uh, George, dear, we'll be late for the Valentine. Oh, yeah. Uh, before I go, Tony, how did you make out with the baby angle? Did you ever do anything about that? Uh, unfortunately, I did. What baby angle? Uh, Your husband convinced me that if a woman had a baby, she wouldn't want her husband to lose his job. So, uh, well, I I finagled a baby into Lydia's life. Well, just how does one do a thing like that? Well, I just sent her to her doctor for a checkup and then arranged to have this foundling lying around the office where she could ask questions. Here's his picture. What? He's adorable. Tony... How far did it get? Well, fortunately, she she didn't seem very interested, and I'm hoping she'll forget it. Oh. After all, if I'm going to be on a vacation for the rest of my life... Tony, I think you're a stinker. I'm glad you failed. Uh, From the viewpoint of last Monday, I failed, but now that I don't want a job... I don't believe it. Well, hello, you two. Tony Uh, says he doesn't want a job. (laughs) Isn't it wonderful? Honestly, when I think of all the fun we've been having this past week... Darling, did you tell them about the Roomba lesson? Yeah, I forgot. (laughs) We've really got to run. The Valentines are waiting. And about the book, Tony. Can you imagine? Tony joined me in reading a book. Bye, old man. And look, Charlotte. 
No red wing cigarettes on the table. And then that stuff over there, that isn't Dillingham's whiskey. And you know I haven't touched sunshine soap in a week, and I never felt cleaner. Congratulations. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Come along, George. Well, I see you, Tony. Bye, Lydia. Now, oh, what do you suppose is the matter with George and Charlotte? Well, they came here to feel sorry for us, and they found out we were sorry for them. Oh, oh dear. You know something? I'm frightened. Everything is too perfect. I go around frightened to death, but it won't last. Tony, kiss me. <laughs> oh, darling, let's be careful, hmm? Be sure you don't slip in the bathtub. And when you cross the street, ask a policeman to help you, please. Mm, I promise. <laughs> Tony. Yes, dear. I hate to sell the house. Well, I thought you wanted to sell it. Uh, Lydia, you've got to make up your mind. Are we going away, or aren't we? Well, I suppose we are. Yes, sure we are. Thank you, darling, for helping me. I needed somebody to bully me. Hmm. Goodbye, windows. Goodbye, chairs. Goodbye, stairway. Now, don't get sentimental. Goodbye, and nuts to you. Now, come on, let's plan our trip. We'll start Monday. Tony. Hmm? It's so beautiful here in the autumn. Couldn't we sell the house in November? I'm sorry, darling. I guess I'm just a stick in the mud, huh? Hello? Who? Oh, uh, just a minute. Uh, it's Bill Blake. Are we supposed to be sore at him? No, of course not. Hello? Yeah, sure. He says he's going to kick Myrtle Valentine in the pants, and then he says, can he come over? Well, why not? And it looks as if he's going to be our best friend, whether we like it or not. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. So long, pal. Well, now we've got to take that trip. We can't let old Bill down. Oh, you were just like this when, when you picked me up that day in the bus. Yeah, pretty glamorous, huh? Mm. How about a kiss? Nah, no, no. Now, go on. No monkey business. We got to work. Now, now, first, we make out a list. One, sell the house. Two, make advances to Lydia. <laughs> Stop that. Two, buy, buy passage to Mexico. Three, make more advances to Tony. Lydia. <laughs> Stop it now. Four, disconnect doorbell. <laughs> hey, George. Well, I thought you were at the Valentine's. Yeah, I was, but I came right back. Come on in. I ran all the way I was sent here. Sit down. Tell me what it's all about. Yes, just so long as it isn't a job. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact... Oh, dear. Yeah, well, go ahead, George. Yeah, well, no sooner had we set foot inside the Valentine's door than you'll never guess who I bumped into. Who? Sonny Sheldon. Who's he? Who's he? Just the president of Sheldon Motors, that's all. Oh? First thing he says to me is, George, where can I get in touch with Tony Kenyon? I hear he's no longer with your agency. Well, what do you want? Nothing much. Just wants you to be vice president in charge of advertising and sales. Well, I hope you told him I'm not interested. Tony, shut up. Go on, George. I'm interested. You are? Well, it's nice to know people want you. You know, it's flattering. Sheldon Motors. They're terribly big, aren't they, Tony? They're the biggest. Oh, which reminds me, make a note to sell our car. Oh, yes, sir. And you better go out in the kitchen and give the servants three weeks' notice. <laughs> right now, darling. Yeah, she, she can't hear us now. What's the deal, George? For a minute, I thought you'd gone completely nuts. Here it is. Sheldon, I'll give you a carte blanche. No interference. Holy mackerel. He said he'd even let you dictate the redesign of the car. Yeah, yeah, that car needs redesigning. If he changed the hood and the rear fenders, well, I could double his sales by March. If you're interested, to meet him at the advertising club at 6 tonight. He's in a hurry. He wants to get going. Tonight? Couldn't he wait till next week? Tony, you know better. His season starts right uh, away. Yeah, 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 you're right. Oh, what the heck's been the matter with me? Oh, you're all right. You need a little, little rest. We all get that way. No, no, no. Five minutes ago, I meant every word I said. Yeah, five minutes ago, you didn't have a job. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do about Lydia? I, I just talked to her into selling the house and taking a trip, and now... Here she comes. I just called American Express, darling. We can get a reservation to leave Monday afternoon. Aren't you jealous, George? <laughs> I'll tell the world. <laughs> well, I have to get back to the Valentine's. Oh, by the way, Tony, I can get you a better deal on those used cars in town. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. Why don't you have a drink with me at the advertising club at, say, 6 o'clock? I'll be there. Good. Well, so long, Lydia. Bon voyage. Bon voyage, Tony. Yeah, bon voyage. <laughs> see you at 6. Now, let me see, let me see. What next? Please? Darling... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, about the trip, uh, don't you think that Monday is rushing it a bit? You think so? 
Well, I don't know. I, I because mean... Because if you'd rather wait... Well, There I... are a few things I'd like to do. I have to return these pictures to Dr. Standish. Pictures? Yes, I suppose I should have told you. Well, told me what? Well, let's see those. <laughs> He's not quite a year old. I call him Fuzzy. Oh, I, I don't know why I kept his pictures. It's just that... Well, last Tuesday, when I went to Dr. Standish's office... Well, you remember. Oh, yeah, go on. Sure. Well, it seems there's a baby doctor across the hall from Dr. Standish, and he had Fuzzy. And a nurse brought him in for Dr. Standish to examine, and I happened to be there, and... Well, I diapered him. So what? Well, <clears throat> now, it seems that this child comes of very good stock. They don't, they don't tell you that, of course. It's against the rules. But it was obvious to me at a glance. He's just at the age where they're... They're heavenly. His eyes are hazel green with flecks of gray and blue. And you can see from the picture how wonderful his hands are and his ears. And there's definite character in his little mouth. Lydia, were you considering adopting this baby? And I knew it was impossible in every way. I knew how anxious you were to take this trip and... You know, to get away from the responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's have another look at those pictures. <laughs> he has a nice smile on the kid. Do you get the impression of unusual vitality? Yeah. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. He has a kind of a football player's face, don't you think? Uh, darling, you obviously worship this child. Oh, I don't be silly. I only worship you. Now, look, suppose we don't go to Mexico. After all, we've had a gorgeous week. Uh, this Sheldon job might not be so awful. Oh, Tony, Tony, I'll never forget this moment. Oh, why not? Do you realize that in, in six years, you never gave a thought to me? And now, after one week of being human, you're ready to sacrifice your newfound happiness, aren't you? Well, not exactly. No, sir, I couldn't do it to you. You have your trip. I'll get over this baby. Now, now, wait a minute. Hey, mind if I come in? The doorbell wasn't working, or maybe I forgot to ring. No, come in, Bill. We're just looking at some pictures. Uh, who's? Just a baby. Uh, how'd you come out with Pussycat and Poochie? I said everything I had to say very fast and took off. Oh, what now? I'm heading for the open sea. Let's see the pictures, huh? Nice hands, nice ears, nice mouth. Who is he? A foundling. And when are you leaving town, Bill? Where'd you get the pictures? I came across the child accidentally in the doctor's office, and he had some pictures. Now, how big a board you got, Bill? Tony's trying to change the subject, aren't you, Tony? Well, of course not. I, I just... Well, why should he want to change the subject? Well, I told Tony about the baby, and he thinks I should adopt it. Oh? He thinks it'll make me happy, but it means Tony would have to take a big job with Sheldon Motors. Oh, really? Uh, Lydia, do you know this doctor? Of course. And uh, Tony knows him? He's our family doctor. You don't say. Now, what is this, a courtroom? Well, as a lawyer, I'm always a little suspicious of coincidences, that's all. I, I suppose Tony suggested you see this doctor? Hmm? Well, yes. What are you driving at, Bill? He's trying to say I deliberately placed that baby in your arms. Well, that's ridiculous. It isn't ridiculous, Lydia. That's true. You mean you knew all about it? Yes, I arranged it. Then you lied to me last Sunday night. Yes. You didn't mean a word when you said you'd quit your job. I didn't. Uh, and when Myrtle Valentine walked out, you weren't glad. You hated me for doing it to you. Yes. The trip, selling the cars, you didn't intend to go through with any of it. You intended to work for Sheldon. That's right, Lydia. Your reservations on my boat are still good, Lydia. Oh, shut up, will you? Then get out of here. No, don't you go, Bill. Well, then I'm going. No, you are not. You're not going anywhere, not until I've told you what I think of you. You sit down. Sit. Okay, I suppose I've got it coming. You most certainly have. Anybody who gets himself into such a mess, sneaking off to doctor's offices, picking up babies from foundling homes, playing golf, reading books, going to theater, and all for a woman. Tony, it's a miracle you didn't crack up. Is that all? Not yet. Tony, you're the man that Bill here has been talking about all his life, and you don't even know it. You're the great lover. 
You work 24 hours a day to deceive me. And why? So you wouldn't lose me. You worked harder to keep me than you did for the baby mall account. You actually learned to dance the rumba for me. Do you know what I think, Tony? I think you're wonderful. I don't get this. The lady is kidding you, pal. No, I'm not kidding you. Tony, when I think of the things that you've done for me, I could cry. My error. I should never have come to your party that day. No, I'm glad you came, Bill. I want to thank you. In fact, I want to thank everybody. But most of all, I want to thank Tony for consenting to be the father of my child. No way for me. I'm still catching up. Darling, have you, have you accepted that Sheldon job yet? I'm meeting him at the advertising club at six. Well, I'm going with you. Oh, darling, really? Don't you I... try to stop me. I just found out that I had a husband a few minutes ago. And Mr. Sheldon better find out right now that you have a wife. Well, I leave you both with my compliments. Lydia, you had the moon if you wanted it. But you're trading it in for twin beds and a baby. Well, maybe you know better than any of us which is really worthwhile. Good luck, both of you. Bill, wait a minute. Yeah, Lydia? This. I'll treasure that kiss. So long, people. So long, Bill. Bon voyage, pal. You have just heard the best place production of Samson Rayfieldson's Skylark, starring June Havoc and Donald Cook. And here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Well, this play seems to show that all the entertaining you have to do in a country house can have some important and lasting result. I hope you've enjoyed Miss Havoc, Mr. Cook, and their playmates as much as I have. Now, let's have a look at our playbill for next week. It's going to be George Kelly's ironic comedy, Craig's Wife, which won Mr. Kelly the Pulitzer Prize. This Mrs. Craig, a strong-minded female, if there ever was one, will be played by Judith Evelyn, and Miss Evelyn is no stranger to the role, for she played it in a Broadway revival a few seasons back. This is Chapman saying goodbye until next week. Skylark by Samson Rayfieldson was adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Heard in the cast were Lawson Zerby as Bill, Eileen Palmer as Myrtle, Mary Patton as Charlotte, Mason Adams as George, Joseph Boland as Valentine, and Edgar Staley as Theodore. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Fred Way. Your announcer is Robert Denton. Best Plays was a transcribed presentation of NBC, the national broadcasting company. This evening, Theater Guild on the Air presents The Damask Cheek, starring Rosalind Russell and Kevin McCarthy. Hear Theater Guild on the Air at 5.30 over KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony Incorporated, California distributor of Packard Motor Cars. Eat at Entree Cafeterias. Select each dish you'll like to eat. You'll like to go to Wilshire Entree for a snack or meal complete. Remember three other convenient Entree Cafeterias. Tonight at 8.30, the Standard Hour, followed by The Stranger from the Sea.